That joke, that joke, yeah, after 10 years has uh, finally got old. And um, various, uh, yeah, various others that have gone, have pledged their allegiance to Tonga as well. Yeah, there are a few people who they, they miss, who obviously we saw in the World Cup playing for Tonga anyway, so it's not too big. A uh, shot people like Tamalolo. Um, I think Tamalolo is uh, the big one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Solomon Carter and people like that but the main emiss- emissions that would have been expected to be in there's um, what's his name the halfback from the Warriors <laughs> Kieran Foran no <laughs> uh, yeah him yeah, yeah that why guy. have we forgot his that name guy. And the fullback as well from the Warriors, uh, Roger Tuivasa-Shek. Um, yes. He, I think he's uh, expecting a child or, or something along those lines, or just had a child, so so that's why he's been left out. And um, Johnson, I'm not sure why he's... Is he injured? I'm guessing he's injured. I think so. He's often injured, isn't he? Unless he's awaiting some more um, criminal charges, I don't know. So obviously um, there are a couple of big misses, but do you think it's quite an easy squad for us to be up against? It's not I the strongest, think, I mean, is it? It's not the strongest. There's a few names in there that you look at and you think, oh, they would, you know, they're dangerous five years ago, but they're probably on the downward curve. Certainly, sort of. I mean, Isaac Luke's playing okay at the moment, but he's he's not the Isaac Luke of five years ago. And there's a few there's a few names in there who were you know next big things and have not really come to much, so I mean, it's still you know it's still going to be a strong squad. And be interesting to see how they go under the new coach as well. Yeah, I mean Maguire will get and play into some sort of organised structures. You would think if he has enough time with with this group. Yeah. But this is uh, the first time around. The, it it just doesn't strike me as who, who's obvious who are the obvious people to control the game for them. Um, so that's going to be. An issue? Are we guessing that it's going to be Martin and Nicarima in the halves from that squad? Is that what you would expect? Yeah, it looks like it. That's what I would expect. I can't. There's there's nobody nobody jumping out. Yeah, there's some big blokes as well. So there's going to be some big forwards for us to to get to grips with, and it's just what what they can do off the back of that with what they've got really. Which to me, their backs look relatively weaker than what we've faced up to in the past so it'll be interesting to see okay do you want to run through the next story which is um a little Christmas bit closer years. to home for yeah. me we briefly mentioned it last week but want to give it the full read out this week so that everyone knows uh knows the full deets yep so uh, wigan warriors have signed forward joe greenwood from national rugby league side the gold coast titans on a three and a half year deal the 25 year old began his career with st helens and made 77 appearances before leaving at the end of 2016 greenwood played in 22 nrl games for the titans during his time with the queensland base club scoring four tries we did have some fan feedback on this one mark yeah paul michael craig got in touch he said as a titans fan i'm not sad to see him go he was a fucking penalty magnet so there you go. Well, I mean, you, you you did have a certain soft spot for him, making you know, keeping an eye on him every week, and uh, I like to think that that that's what's led to him coming to Wigan. Well, I just think it's surprising that he wasn't getting getting a look in at all. I think this Wigan deal has been in the pipeline for some time now. Um, obviously, a lot of clubs are express expressing interest in him, but I think Wigan have been lining lining up things for next year in the serious expectation that John Bateman won't be at the club. So. Um, so I think and, we're and going there's to be some space as well with a certain certain Mr. Tompkins disappearing as well. Well, that's that's brought it forward to to this year. Um, I believe that he was already going to be coming to Wigan next year by the time that Joel Tompkins had left. Um, was the understanding that I, I'd picked up. So, so there you go. I think it's a good signing. I'm glad to have him on board. He's a he's a very talented player. Um, I don't remember him being too penalty prone in his days in Super League and the games I saw last year in the NRL I think there's always got to be an element of he, he joined after the season had started I think they were, I think the season was one or two games old by the time he joined um, so so that you've got to allow that he didn't get a pre-season in, he didn't get to learn the sort of way things are interpreted the structures, in the NRL yeah. and, and that sort of stuff so some of the penalties he might have given away might have been because of those sorts of things, things you could get away with in the Super League that you couldn't get away with in the NRL. I always thought he did pretty well when I saw him play for the Titans. I thought he was very unlucky to not get any go 
at all this year. So uh, hopefully he'll be knocking on the door of the England squad again like he was before he went to Australia. Okay. Tom Briscoe has signed a new two-year contract with reigning Super League champions Leeds Rhinos. The England international winger, 28, has won every domestic honour with Leeds since joining in 2014 from Hull FC. Decent bit of business, in your opinion? The the only thing I I would say is Leeds are are starting to witness things up, aren't they? Which... Yeah, which is never never a great sign for which your uh, it's, it's, long-term competitiveness. It's great when you're tying down your, your core of your side to those sorts of deals. When you're, si- when you're tying down people who have occasionally shown inconsistencies, I'm not sure that it's as it good. A- but then you look around and think, what what out there is, is, is better on the market? And there's not a lot. So I think it's the right thing for them to do, tie down a player with a record of, of someone like Tom Briscoe. Yeah, and I think there, you know, there are some players coming through there who are pushing for that that slot and his place in the side. But I don't think they're enough yeah, that you'd want to you'd want to gamble yeah, on them yeah. at this year. I think yeah, I looking, into, I think you'd, you'd give them a year's development and you might be willing more to take that gamble. Yeah, I agree. I I I, I agree with where you're coming from on that one certainly. Right, so some more news, and Wakefield Trinity captain Danny Kermond has agreed a new one-year deal. The 32-year-old second row is the longest-serving player at Bellevue, having joined from Huddersfield in 2012 after an initial loan spell in 2010. He's gone on to make 150 appearances for Trin, scoring 44 tries. Yeah, do you, do you think this is a good one? I think this is a decent one. I mean, he is Mr. Wakefield, isn't he? And I think... I've, would you have given to deal possibly? Well, I think it's probably going to be a rolling deal as long as he feels like he's able to contribute to the leadership of that squad um, and put in some reasonable minutes. I'm, I'm pretty sure Wakefield will want him around from, for that maturity and leadership. And for someone who went through the difficult times with them and now that they seem a lot more settled, he adds a perspective to the, the younger players they're trying to bring through about yeah. how, how things you know how things can go and how things have gone and and I certainly think it would be strange to see that squad without that element of, of leadership personally is, is my view yeah and I think it's a, definitely someone you want to keep on board it's, it's whether they did want to time to a longer term deal but I suppose it's not going to be then many people fishing for him if anything it's not like he's going to have a remarkable year next year and he necessarily will be steady away no exactly I think it's going to be if Wakefield don't want to keep him then he'll go looking elsewhere and that's, yeah. that's what it'll be until he sort of decides to hang up the boots I think at this stage so, so I think um, I think it's, it's sensible all round that one a uh, bit of disappointing news this one Andrew Heffernan has been ruled out for the rest of the season following a string of concussions the 23 year old hasn't played for over two months last playing in the club's 31-12 victory over Witness Tim Sheens has now confirmed why the centre has been a absent with specialists advising the 23 year old not to play again this year it's really worrying for a player who was actually one of the bright lights in your whole chaos side. he was yeah in informed player doing really well adding a bit of extra to that team and only 23 as well to get ruled out for you know no, well it'll be nine months yeah. with concussions that's quite serious it is it is concerning, but he's having the right thing done by him. So, yeah. so that's pleasing to see. Yeah, I mean the club, are, you know, given the position the club are in, you you could see where the idea would come from to push him in and say go on get over it. But the fact they are taking the step back and saying no, it's more important you get yourself sorted is you know commendable. Yeah, it's positive for the way the club's dealing with it and the way our sport deals with this serious issue. Yeah, uh, so more news from the other side of the river and Hull FC winger Fatuli Talanoa has signed a one-year deal. The 30-year-old is in his fifth season with the club and has played over 100 appearances for the Black and Whites, scoring 55 tries. Yeah, he was. Um, this was announced on Wednesday night, I think, when, when the club was hosting it, a quiz event with um, the players being part of teams, with of fans having quiz teams oh, yeah. players players being a part of it and um, it was sort of fed through that news during that night and um, Sarah who sometimes hosts the show she was on the team that had Tuli Talanoa as um, the playing representative so um, they they sort of 
he said, they said he didn't have a very good poker face when she asked if it was him that was signing the new that was going to be announced as a, a sign of the but new what, deal <laughs> just just a side of who it is but what a good way to to announce your signing into a, a group of your hardest hardcore that's a really nice way for the club to you know they get the news first and obviously it was social media these days it spreads within 25 seconds but it is nice that they're you know rewarding those guys who are coming out to quiz nights and all sorts that to tell them the news before anyone else exactly and it gets the the, the fans totally engaged with the club as well from that that's the news story side of it and you know the all the other activities the more clubs can do those sorts of things and get the players one on one with the fans and and that sort of stuff is is good by me um Wakefield Trinity forward Paulie Paulie has signed a new contract for 2019. The 24-year-old former Newcastle Knights forward, who is a huge six foot four and 19 stone, has he's, played. He's he's 19 stone after he's had a shit. He's the he's the biggest player in Super League based on the stats that I've seen. Anyway, let's let's. He's he's bigger way. than 19 stone. Yeah. There's no way he's that he's down to 19 stone. <laughs> he's played in all. He's played in all of. Um, Trinity's matches this year apart from three so um, and, and he's been improving as the years going on as well so I'm sure that's re- news that's really pleased Wakefield fans just throwing another news story on the Wakefield side as well um, that's going to have delighted the Wakefield fans I'm sure youngster Max Jowett he's put pen to a three year deal with Wakefield Trinity so he's yeah. going to be rocking the uh, the tricolour until the end of the 2021 season um, he made his debut back in 2014 can you believe so um so he was only a baby when he made his debut for them but now he's gone on to make uh 46 appearances and nine tries in that time so they'll hope for many many more over the next three years from that young kid and before we move on to championship news tim i'm just there's one more big piece of news today yeah there is yeah so um and this is probably the biggest news story maybe um that's broken of late but but Tyrone, and not a positive one, Tyrone Roberts will leave Warrington at the end of the season to return to Australia on compassionate grounds. The 27-year-old halfback joined the Wolves from NRL side Gold Coast Titans on a three-year deal at the start of this season, but his contract did contain a clause allowing him to go back to the NRL after one year if he was homesick. And unfortunately, his family have struggled to settle in the northwest of England, and they will be back down under next year. That leaves a bit of a hole to fill really for for Warrington but it does give them plenty of cap room and possibly money on the in the budget to spend as he was their overseas marquee player so he was on over 175k anyway yeah um so he's yeah. on a big way so it gives them some so they've got some money that they can go and try and get someone back in with on on that front i suppose well i did i did see something today flying around the internet around um Carl Eastmond because he's been linked with Warrington a couple of times and obviously he's, he's although he's going to be a lower cap value because he's going to be a returning player and he's been out so, of the league for enough time that I think his first year will be really reduced on the, on the cap yeah, I think yeah. it's like yeah so he, he would be you know they'd have the money and he would cost less on the cap so I think it it's quite likely he could go there we did get an email in this afternoon actually um, on this uh, and I just and I thought it was an interesting point, so I'll just um, try and get it up here in front of me. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, Paul Chamberlain said. Um, my view is that we should stop signing average Aussies, especially as I believe Roberts was on a marquee contract. They are just a drain on the game and rarely hang around. Team should uh, Warrington should put their faith in Patton and move on. If anything, I would tell him to fuck off now. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a little bit harsh. Well, I mean, um, I get the point. Price I guess has come the, out, the... hasn't he? And he said that Roberts has has re- reaffirmed his commitment to being being successful in his one year at Warrington and and that sort of stuff. And I don't think Warrington necessarily can afford to bin him off now because they don't have depth beyond. Brown and Patton and it's been shown in games where either Brown or Roberts has either been off form or off the field that they haven't been able to create a lot in those games so so I think it's I think it, he does need to stay around they do need to put the faith in him for the rest of the year and they need to back him and hopefully he'll do, do good on his promise to deliver something for them before he goes back yeah do you want to move into the championship 
Yes, and uh, Barrow Raiders have completed the signing of the Toronto winger Johnny Powell. I'd forgotten about him. <laughs> on an 